back on the job with the steel door at the Shafto Deef. Let me show you what's happening. Sorry about the noise, we gotta use the generator until we get some shore power here. Since the last episode, we were able to get our hinges on and uh, put some more bracing on the door itself. So the good news is we got a swinging door. We ordered some 3.5 millimeter sheet to go on the front of the door. And now we're kind of brainstorming on how we want to create a lock for it. Right now, Don Don has some ideas. He's putting together. Here's a shot at our four hinges. On the last episode, I, I said we were gonna go ahead and buy a different welder. And we did, it came in. It's a, uh, it's the same brand manufacturer, but it's a gasless MIG. So it's a flux, uses flux core wire. We doubled up the framing here to make kind of a box for the mechanism that we're gonna put in here. And I'm thinking it's just gonna be a, one of those simple latches. You pull up, slide, slide back down, and then you lock. I'm gonna take that lock a step further. If you ever heard of a No Way Jose lock, it was used, well, the first time I saw it was used was in the late 80s at Clark Air Base here in the Philippines. They used this on base for the bicycle lock, but what it is, <coughs> it's called No Way Jose lock. It's a slide, then you throw the lever down, and your locking mechanism comes through there with the hole in there for your lock. But the way they made it was they put a piece of pipe over that that the, that the lever fits into. And then you have to reach up inside the pipe to lock or unlock your bike. It makes it impossible for someone to come along with a piece of steel, you know, and, and Use it, use it as a lever to force that lock open. And whoever came up with the idea, they called it No Way Jose. As long as you didn't forget and put a combination lock on it, you were okay. The pieces that I'm using to create the hinges were taken from my office chair that I brought here all the way from the US. Then the cats ruined it. Then it was out in the rain, then I set it on fire. So I needed some uh, quarter inch round bar and I found it in the, in the ashes of the office chair. So the remains of my corporate office chair are permanently enshrined in the Chateau Deep. How cool is that? We saw this method as a way to uh, make welding hinges easier. So we're gonna give it a shot. You wanna put it in water? unique way to install the crossbar here. Instead of just welding it as a butt weld, he uh, created a cutout, a square cutout, to fit this crossbar into, to make it a little bit stronger. Good idea. your air out it's like like a flame it just cuts you never just like a welder never touch this side has a safety switch here and once it starts try not to stop you just keep going if it if it seems like it's cutting slow you slow down if it's cutting fast you can speed up you can stop and restart but only if you're like going off course or something. You also gotta be careful what's underneath because it'll catch on fire anything that's under there. 
I hope he didn't blow a fuse. I either blew a fuse or we lost power from up there. That's pretty good as long as you don't stop, but sometimes it's hard to not to stop. And sometimes when you're going, you gotta watch because when you get down to here, you tend to go like this because that head has to stay flat. But when you get like this, then you get rough cut. So concentrate on keeping the, keeping the cutting head parallel to the piece. But it's pretty cool, huh? Saves a shit truck of time. Wanna try these? Yeah. Make an adjustment. Make it flat. Oh no! I think we're running out of fuel. Got to hook the arrows up. You started out good. boots on. Fits good. Let's tack it up. Beautiful. That's the best job yet. Perfect cut.
All right, before we start making noise this morning, I just want to show a little bit of the progress that we've made so far. We've got our, our vertical and our horizontal two by three sixteenths straps. They go crisscross up and down the door, kind of like that, the old prison door look that we're going for. And we even managed to kind of overlap these and try to make it look like, a, you know, flexible strap. We're going to do uh, one more arch for the outside of the door here as the border. You can weld it while it's up there too. That's what I did when I made the helmet holders. Just weld your, weld your first link flat. And then you could use, you know, one arm and pull it tight, weld it, weld it. What we're going to try to do here is use that chain as a mount for this light. Find this old light fixture. So we're going to try to hang it by the chain. Wait, 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 watch it. You gotta check check which way you're bending. Bend it towards the street here. You wanna end up with this. Up there, yeah, in the middle of the door. But it's gotta clear it, right? Don't go left or right, go this way. All right, so we're trying to figure out how we wanna configure the, the No Way Jose lock. So you got you got two threats, right? To cut the lock and to, or to cut the bar. That's, a, that's two ways to open the door for your average thief. If they have a hacksaw or a big bar to crack the lock. So what we're thinking about doing, we, we can cover this lock with this plate. And like I talked about earlier, it's enough to get your hand up in there and remove the lock. And the lock isn't exposed to any attack. But then you still have the bar. So if they can't get the lock, they might want to cut this. So what we might be able to do you have to be over this is come up with a plate like this where the bar is is recessed just beneath this plate until you're ready to open it. Once you have the lock off, you flip with one hand, you, you flip up the bar and you grab it right here and then you open. So that's what we're trying to get to. Comments? <laughs> we should make this one first. So let's just focus on the bottom, the bottom one first. I think we need to trim this. Yeah. Let's trim this. It's getting in the way of the lock. Yep. I think it'll work. It's it's tight, but I like it.
So right now we're kind of brainstorming on how we want to position the No Way Jose lock. And then we'll cut a hole in the back. So it's actually going to be flush against here like that. So that'll prevent accessing the bar from the, these three sides. And then when you open the door, you flip it and grab it. Open. And then to close it, close it back down. There, that's how it's, this is how it should be, right? Just like that. I have to trim, it, trim that out, and then it's going to have to be cut all the way down, right? Lower this top so it'll go back and forth. And then we could make like a, a little roof so no one can get into here, right? And we, we also need to create a top for the cowbell. You could just take a little notch out of here, very top, just like that, quarter inch. Yeah, just so it's not, it's, it's just a little close. Just right here, not, not the whole thing, just down here, eighth inch. Yeah, you don't even need that much, maybe a half that. We could put sides on it, either that or we could just strengthen this up with some angle, just to strengthen this, this, this part here. While I've got the generator off, I just wanted to talk about one of my other experiments. You know, I used galvanized steel on the frame of the door as, as well as the, the door opener, the handle. And uh, that's not the look I want. I want it to be, you know, corroded with surface rust. One time we had a electrical conduit that got blocked with concrete during construction. We couldn't get our wire down there. So we bought some muriatic acid, 29%. And we poured that down in the conduit and it dissolved the concrete. But what it also did is uh, it ran in into the garage ceiling. That's where the, the conduit went. And it puddled around my uh, steel decking that I used for the, the ceiling in the garage, which is galvanized. And after a day or two, it completely removed that galvanization and it began to rust. So I guess, you know, what muriatic acid does is it will attack anything that's organic. My plan is to spray some on the door handle and see if we can get that galvanization off. The next matter at hand is going to be uh, experimenting with the uh, hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid that I talked about. This door handle here is galvanized and what I want to do is I don't want it to stay like that because it clashes with the door as it looks now. So what I want to do is apply some muriatic acid to that and to some of these places where we sanded just to give it a, a head start on getting that little patina going with the corrosion. So this is my muriatic acid but my my pumper handle stopped working so I'm going to try to see if I can apply it to this blue towel and wipe it on.
if you can see even dripping it on here from the spout it starts to sizzle right away when I drip it on see the, the uh, fumes coming off well, let's see if I could do this We'll see how much it eats off there. The progress we've made over the last couple days is finishing up the No Way Jose lock. We boxed in the entire lever from top to bottom. So when you, when you reach in there and remove the lock, you can flip up the handle here and then Unlock, unlock the door like that and likewise to close it push the handle in and you'll fix your lock I'll see if I can give you a, a closer demonstration of how the the no way Jose lock is working now now the door is locked I can't really get to the the handle at all so to open it you just use your two hands here under the the bottom here and unlock the padlock remove the padlock and then you could flip up the handle outside the protective cage and that's it it's the door is open to lock it just to see Thing, push it down in gonna fix your lock I like the way it turns out it, it worked out so I think it looks pretty cool I found this old light fixture up laying in the, the junk pile in the back so what we did was we used uh, just chain and welded the chain uh, to make the fixture and then just hung the, the light like that so I like the way that it's going to, sh you know, sway in the breeze. It'll look pretty neat. So I think the only thing left to complete the door now that was in the plan, we were going to put some dome sh dome shaped bolts, you know, in the in the corners of the straps. Uh, to kind of finish off that that look and I did buy a magnetic drill to do that all right I'm back back here with the magnetic drill this is the drill that I that I purchased it's not really the one I wanted uh, the one I wanted uh, was a, a brand called Vivor and it uh, pretty well-known brand over here and it came with a lot more attachments uh, and also has a variable speed on it which I wanted but I just couldn't get it I tried to order it twice and it didn't work out this thing's heavy and if, if you lose power uh, to your drill for whatever reason especially when using the generator it'll fall so they want you to use this strap but I'm gonna start way down low here without using the strap and see how it goes. We'll mark a couple holes and see what we can do. When I retracted, retracted the drill, my bit fell off. It's just a taper fit, you know, MT2, I believe it's two, or MT3. Let's see what the hole looks like. All right, so the hole actually looks really good for the amount of uh, play that that bit had. 
bolt is really a, a nice fit. Okay, so we got all of our holes drilled and we put our bolts in. And I decided to just go with the center of the door for the, for the bolt accents. But I wanna finish this door up, so I'm going to hit the, the handle one or two more times with the acid because uh, it's not doing the job as far as removing the galvanization. It's probably because this this round bar it just has a thicker layer of of uh, galvanization on it. So I, I've got a new spray bottle and uh, I brought some more hydrochloric acid with me, muriatic acid. So I'm going to hit this and then uh, I also brought uh, a bottle of boiled linseed oil and this is what I use to protect the door. You know, I, I do want the rust but I don't want it to be too aggressive and continue rusting. I want to try to preserve it. So. Uh, what I did with the garage, the, the door on our garage is the same thing. You take a, some linseed oil, thin it up with a little uh, acetone, and just simply wipe this on with a rag. You know, put a coat on the front and the inside with the rag, and uh, it'll darken it up, give it a kind of a dull shine, and it stops it from rusting. This is how I'm putting the, the boiled linseed oil on. Just, just spray it and use a cloth rag and just work it around. You see how it changes color of the steel. Yet it retains the, the look of Look at the rust, you know, look at the corrosion. Mixing it with the acetone works really well, makes it easier to apply. close-up comparison here so you you can see you know right away what kind of difference in the patina this makes and it lasts um, depending on, on how much coverage you have on your on your item uh, I know in the garage of course the inside the inside definitely lasts longer than the outside because of the weather but we we try to apply it you know probably every quarter and we're behind on that schedule but yeah it it lasts a, a decent amount of time you know i even use this inside the garage i made uh, steel shelving in the garage and uh, I treated it with this as well. I didn't paint it because I really like this. If you haven't guessed so far, I like this kind of patina. But uh, I left the steel shelving in the garage unpainted and uh, just treated it with this. Uh, where I got this idea from was uh, from my interest in, in cars, old cars. 
Uh, there was a, a guy with an old pickup truck that uh, had the original paint. And it was, it was sun bleached and corroded, not unlike this door. And uh, he, he wanted to keep that going. You know, he didn't want it to continue to rust. Just wanted to preserve that look. And uh, this is where I got the idea from. Linseed oil and acetone. And he takes it to car shows and gets compliments on it all the time. I think that's it for the door on the Chateau Deef. And don't forget there's a part one to this, to this door if you haven't seen that. There's a link in the description. Also, if you're interested in the general assembly of the, of the Chateau itself, you can find some episodes on that in the home build playlist. This, this project was a lot of fun. I'm glad we were able to follow through with all of the plans that we had at the very start of the project. It kept us busy while construction's ongoing up at the top of the hill. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.